Good morning. Everybody hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me. Anybody else? Thumbs up. Anybody else hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. So we are on uh, Shabbos, Aftes, and just to uh, conclude the Gemara we uh, got to yesterday, the question was, we had a, a, um, a, a scufa, a, a, a doorstep, a scoop, a, a stoop, a, a, a platform in front of a door. And the question was, why would it act as a Rishusa Yachid, a Rishusa Rabbim, according to Rabbi Meir, dependent on whether the door is open or closed. And, um, uh, the first attempt in the Gemara was to say that it was the scupa of a mavoi, it was the platform at the doorway of the, uh, uh, the, the, of the uh, street itself. And then the Gemara said, Amar Avashi, that really it's the doorway of the, um, it's the doorway of the, of the house. And essentially, it, uh, the doorway of the house, if it had an a, a overhang that was actually for Tefrachim, so then we would say a halacha of that uh, the the side of the platform would itself go down and and close uh, it, it would go down and it would close it as a wall. So uh, essentially, that would count as a halachic wall either way. So in our Lego scenario, this, if this was the, the, the top of the, uh, the, the, this was the platform itself, so then the side of, uh, of the overhang itself would act as, um, this would act as a wall. And since we have a little bit of a wall, and this is a halachic space because you have Daladamas, it would go down and enclose it. It's a halachic, um, a virtual wall. Like we say, um, good achis mechitzta and good asik mechitzta, that if you have a wall, it can go up and it can go down below it and above it. So too, if you, ha- you have a p tikra, the, literally the mouth of the, of the ceiling, the mouth of the roof, meaning the side would go down and enclose the doorway. And that would be what would enclose the platform and make it a rishus hayachit. However, we're talking about a case where we don't have a... Uh, a little more water, and it's not funny. Uh, um, so the uh, the platform is now not enclosed, and because we don't. So since it doesn't, it's not enclosed. Uh, it, it would not count as a rishus hayachid unless we have two of these, and each one is less than four tfachim, but combined, they would be four tfachim, and the door closes right in between. And, and we have over here, we have a, 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 a open space between, and the door is in that open space. So if the door is closed, it can, doesn't allow the two it doesn't allow for the two overhangs to connect. And since the two overhangs are not connecting, uh, it, it's not considered enclosed. However, if we have one of these and the door is open and then another one right next to it, they will now combine to make a four tefachim overhang. And then the p tikra, the front of it can go down and halachically enclose it. So, uh, uh, just to uh, um, finalize that the concept, we say that the two overhangs would combine to make a fourth tefachim overhang, 
and therefore the front of it would come down and close off and make it Rishus Hayachid. However, if there's a doorway that closes in between, they cannot connect. The doorways will not connect. Sorry, the doorway will block the two platforms or the two overhangs from connecting. And if you only have one, you don't have four Tvachim that will enclose. That's the conclusion of the Gemara um, yesterday that we were rushing to complete. So we're in the last uh, few lines of Tess Amad Aleph. The Rabbi Meir continued and said, If the platform itself, the stoop, is, four, is ten tefachim high, or and it's wide four tefachim, it's its own rishus, it's its own domain. And this, and this supports Rabbi Yitzchak Baradim, and Rabbi Yitzchak Baradim, where he said that Rabbi Meir used to say, Anywhere where you find two aspects of a domain and they happen to be uh, in the same domain, meaning you have a stoop that it itself is a Rishus Hayachid and it's in a Rishus Hayachid. The stoop itself is high enough to be a Rishus Hayachid and it's in another Rishus Hayachid, which would be the case over here where it's a part of the doorway, so it's in Rishus Hayachid. Um, like a platform in the Rishus Hayachid, which is ten tefachim high, four tefachim wide, so it itself should act as a Rishus Hayachid. It itself should act as a Rishus Hayachid, um, but it's inside a Rishus Hayachid, so it shouldn't matter anyhow, because you are allowed to carry from Rishus Hayachid to Rishus Hayachid. Uh, if it's Gava, Yud, Baruch, Dal, Asa, Lekate, Olam, you're not allowed to even though you're allowed to carry in it. So if it was a pit, you're allowed to put something in there or anything like that. In this scenario, where it's a uh, platform and it's high up above the ground, you're not allowed to take your wares, your package, and readjust it on your shoulder on that platform. Why may you not do that? As a gzera, as a uh, 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 fence, Maybe people are going to be used to doing that in their private domain and they're going to do the same in a public domain. And if you had a, uh, a ledge in the Rosh Hashanah, that actually could be Rosh Hashanah, specifically if it's a tail, if it's a mound of dirt in Rosh Hashanah, that mound uh, is 10 tefachim high, 4 tefachim wide at the top, that would count as uh, 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 that would count as a rishus hayachid, a private domain within the rishus harabim within the public domain. And as a result, what could happen is somebody's going to use that to readjust their packaging and actually take something while they're standing in rishus harabim and will be putting it down in the rishus hayachid. So Rabbi Meir holds that in this particular case of a rishus hayachid inside a rishus hayachid that can be used to adjust packaging on your shoulder, you're not allowed to do it because you may do that in a private domain, yeah, sorry, in a public domain, in Rishus Arabin, and that is a Iser, the Orisa. With this, we conclude the first section of the Gemara of Shabbos that talks about Rishuyas, and we're going to get into Hil Shabbos of uh, things you're not allowed to do on Erev Shabbos, or really things you're not allowed to do in general when there's a mitzvah to be done. And as we mentioned, as it says at the beginning of the Masechta, that all of uh, not carrying at the beginning of the Masechta was in order to get to this point, why there's a, a, a why is there a fence of saying that um, a, a Taylor shouldn't put his pin in his lapel because maybe he's going to carry it on Shabbos. So we first mentioned the halachas of Shabbos of carrying to get to the point where it says certain things are not allowed to be done on Friday in preparation for Shabbos. But our first mission is going to say on a, on a regular day, what things may not be done in, at, when it's already the time for Mincha, lest you get carried away with it and then miss the opportunity to have Mincha. So we are in Tess Summit Base 9b. A person shouldn't sit down in front of a, a barber, Samach Mincha, before the time of Mincha. I think one is going to ask us what time of Mincha are we talking about. Actually, it's following until he davens, and then only after thereafter is he allowed to go to the barber. 
that's a person not going to a bathhouse. Malilabursaki and not going to his tanning place where his hides, the, the leathers that he's making, are soaking in a solution. And is not allowed to sit down to a meal. Malilabdina not into a, a judgment without having a However, in the Schilu, if he started any of these um, operations, um, and the Gemara is going to talk about us and tell us what is what counts as having begun. The Meschila must be You're not allowed to um, uh, take a, a, a hefsek. You're not allowed to stop it. Mafsikin lekriya shema. Do take a break. You do stop what you're doing for shema. They mafsikin lekfila, but you don't stop the tefila. Rashi says because shema is the oraisa. Shema is a, a biblical obligation. Uh, also, the time of Shema often um, uh, is, is going to uh, end soon, um, in the mornings at least, and at night, Chazal uh, Asr, because you may fall asleep. Either way, um, uh, you stop for Shema, but you don't have to stop for, for um, David. So the Mishnah, uh, and so the Gemara is uh, uh, this. Now, uh, in the times of, for times for Mincha, there are multiple times for Mincha. One time for Mincha is um, uh, as soon as midday comes, the uh, the uh, carbon tummet of the afternoon is allowed to be brought, and that's the time for Mincha. Now, uh, uh, since we can't know exactly when noon is, at least it seems that's the reasoning in the Gemara in, in Sahin. So uh, it has to be that you can see a shadow. Um, it has to be that you can see a shadow of a uh, upright wall um, in order to start Mincha, because that means that the moon is, sorry, the sun is beyond midday already. Because midday, the sun is directly above everything, and then there's no shade. And so when, when it's a bit beyond that, that's when they start bringing a carbon helmet. So that's called t- t- um, Sheish Vachetzi, six and a half hours into the day. And as you know, that the, the, day, the, the halachic time starts at morning. So hour one, two, three, four, uh, five and six are your morning. Six is noon. And six and a half is when you can start bringing the carbon tummet. So that's Mincha Gedola, the great Mincha. You still have a lot of time for Mincha left. Then three hours later, which is half the time of Mincha is already gone, is Mincha Ketana. There's a little bit of mincha left, and then halfway between then and uh, um, and uh, nighttime, which is uh, an hour and a quarter after mincha katana, is plaga mincha is half the mincha, as we saw in Bronx. So, uh, which mincha are we talking about over here when it says that you're not allowed to do any of these things once the time of mincha has come? What are we talking about? Hi, some of the mincha. Are we talking about mincha gedolah? Meaning. Six and a half hours into the day, am I alone? Why can't you do uh, uh, take a haircut and all these things? There's plenty of time left in the day. Rather, what we're talking about is mincha katana. If it, if it is already mincha katana um, or close to mincha katana, meaning it's already nine and a half hours into the day, and now you only have two and a half hours left to daven mincha, so then. Uh, don't do any of these things because you may get carried away. Um, uh, so then why, if you started, don't you have to stop? Even if you started, you should have to stop because you're going to miss out the time. You're going to miss the time to daven. And therefore, our Mishnah that says you don't have to stop should be a contradiction to Rishuvah because it says, Rabbi Shubh says, that once the time for Mincha uh, uh, came, and you're not allowed to even taste anything, uh, before you actually daven, you have to make sure that you daven, and only then are you allowed to eat anything. Uh, so, uh, and then our Mishnah said that if you started, you don't have to stop. You would have to stop according to Rabbi Levi, because you're not allowed to eat anything. So the first answer that Gemara says, La'olam, you're right. We're talking about at the beginning of the day. We're talking about uh, uh, the beginning of time, Mincha Gedolo, and we're talking about it's six and a half hours into the day. It's just past noon. And you're not allowed to do any of these things. 
However, we're not talking about a typical thing that you're about to do, but rather when it says, you know, I take a haircut, but that's part of Ben Alasa. Rebbe of Yudah Nasi had a son-in-law who wanted to learn how the Kohen Gadol took a haircut. And so he paid lots of money for a barber to cut individually each one of his hairs at the same um, size. Today we can use clippers, but they would use it the same size where the hairs were touching each other, when, uh, but not, uh, not uh, sitting over each other. A very unique haircut. So that was very expensive and took a lot of time. So that's the kind of haircut you can't do. If you're taking a basic buzz, of course, you could uh, uh, um, you can take a haircut. Uh, what the, our Mishnah, when it said that you can't sit down for a haircut, um, even though there's another five and a half hours to Dr. Menachah, it's talking about when you're taking a long type, type of haircut. Valula Menachah, someone says you can't go into a bath, a bathhouse. Lakula Melsa the Menachah, says you're taking a full, the full spa package. You're starting from the beginning, from the sweating and the bathing, and it's a full package. So therefore, you're not allowed to, um, uh, you're not allowed to do it because it may take a lot of time. Similarly, Loyla um, Bursaki, and not to go into the tanning house where you're taking care of the hides. Lebursaki Gedola to a big Bursaki. Loyla Lechol is not to sit down for a meal. Besuda Gedola, a big meal. Loyla Din, and not to sit down to a court case. Betchilas Din, when, when it's opening arguments, they take a lot of time for each one to present their arguments. However, Rav Ahab Yaakov says, no, we're not talking about unique type of cases. The Mishra said a general thing, don't sit down for a haircut, don't sit down for, for a meal, etc. So uh, he says, the Sparis the Don is talking about our basic haircut. So why are you not allowed to sit down? Maybe his, his, the, the barber's scissors will break. The barber's scissors will break. And, and not to go into a bathhouse, even if you don't plan to go to the to bathe, only to to sweat, to the sweat room. But, and Lazir Ba'alma, but nevertheless, Lachachila, my lady, why can't you go in? Maybe he's going to pass out from the heat. Volula Brusiki, and not to the uh, tanning house. Yuni, even if he's only going in to check on the tan, on the hides that are there. Yuni Ba'alma, so Lachachila, my lady, why is he not allowed to go in? Um, maybe he's going to see that some of the some of the um, hides that he's uh, that he's that are in the solution are going are are getting destroyed, and he's going to get get uh, distraught over it. Um, and not to sit down for a meal, even a suda ketana. So therefore, why is he not allowed to do it? Maybe he's going to get dragged into the meal. And and then all drag on, the little din, big din, and even it, it to based in to uh, to judgment, you're not allowed to sit down even for the conclusion concluding arguments. Nevertheless, why can't you go in? Lachatila my loy, so why can't I sit down? Dilma chazi time of a sasadine may be is going to be an argument or or a reasoning is going to be presented uh, that will uh, um, uh, uproot the ideas that, or the conclusion that has been made, and they're going to have to restart the arguments, and then that'll uh, drag on. So uh, essentially what, uh, what um, Rav Ahab Yaakov is saying is, no, really, all of these cases are typical cases. But don't start, even if you think it's good, just going to be five minutes until you down them, don't do it, because it could end up taking a longer time, much longer than you anticipated. And so uh, um, nevertheless, so therefore, lechatchila don't do it. Nevertheless, if you've done it, since there's enough time for you to conclude uh, um, the mincha, you're allowed to continue if you started, but don't start lechatchila first daven and then get into work. If you uh, if you started, you're allowed to continue. So, so the Gemara says, "Emesayas chalas hisperes." What is the beginning of all of this? What about a haircut? At what point do you say, you know what? I already started. I don't have to stop. So Rav Avin says, Amar Avin Mashiach When the barber puts the um, the, uh, the protective uh, cloth over uh, around the uh, uh, over the, uh, the one getting the haircut to protect him from the dropping uh, the hair dropping, that counts as already begun doesn't mean that the haircut began. You already sat down and you're already in the chair. 
Om Enosai Vascholas Merchatz. When does it begin? And when does it count as having begun the bathhouse? Amar of Avim Mishiyarim Af Rasa. When he starts, uh, I mean, when he starts taking off his hat, he used to wear a, a, a kerchief on the head or some sort of turban. And as soon as he takes that off, that's already having begun the bathhouse. Um, Amos says, "Hold Bursaki." And when does it count as the beginning of the Bursaki that he has begun um, the tanning? Mishayikshar ben Ksepa, when he put his apron on between his shoulders and he binds it between his shoulders. Um, Amos says, "Has Chalos Achid." When does it count that you began eating? So Rav Ach Rav Amar Rav says, "Mishayatil Yadov," and he when he washed his hands. Rav was in uh, uh, in um, Rav was in Baba. Rukhanina says when he uh, when he un, uh, unties his belt. Um, this is for them and this is for us. In Sarashi explains. And in Babel, they used to wear their belts really tight. And before each meal, they would untie their belt. So Rav Hanina, who was in Eretz Yisrael, was explaining uh, the opinion or the or what it was for the Bnei Babel, for the people in Babel, when they would begin their meal. They said as soon as they untie their belt, that counts as beginning meal. However, Rav, who was the uh, Rosh Hashiva in, 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 uh, in uh, Babel, so he was explaining that the Bnei Yisrael, who don't do that, when does their meal begin? Their meal begins when they wash their hands. These uh, Babylonians, uh, uh, according to the opinion that Myrit is is optional, and we saw in Brachas that there's an opinion that says that when you have other mitzvahs to do, other things to do, um, there was an opinion that said that Myrit is optional, and you don't have to uh, uh, stop the mitzvah you're doing or postpone the mitzvah you're doing in order to have Myrit. Um, keeping the Shara Lehamayne, once they've uh, uh, once they've uh, um, untied their belt, they don't have to retie their belt. Um, however, according to the opinion that Myrib is an obligation, so then um, then we make him retie his belt. So the Gemara says, why, why would he say that? Mincha, we see, everybody says it's an obligation, and yet we said that as soon as he's untied his belt, he's exempt from from uh, um, davening the mincha right now, he can continue the meal. But to Nana, we learned that it doesn't have to stop. We said that's when his belt stopped. So the Gemara says, um, By mincha, we're not really concerned if he has a meal. You know why? Because people don't drink in the middle of the day, at least back then. Uh, people didn't drink in the middle of the day because they had work to do. Uh, but so even if they were eating lunch and they had a meal, they wouldn't drink. However, by by uh, nighttime, where you're sitting down to dinner and you didn't have marriage yet, at that point, we there was a concern that if you drink, um, that he has to that, that uh, he's going to be drunk. He's going to drink a lot because he doesn't have work to do after that. So he's going to drink uh, more than he should before he davens. And therefore, for Myrith, if Myrith is an obligation, then we would tell him, retie your belt and daven, and only then eat because of a concern of drinking. We are now on Yud Amar Halak. There, there's no, it's not common to become drunk. Here, it's common to be drunk. Inami, or perhaps. By Mincha, there's a set time, there's a, dead, a, a, dead, a deadline, so he's going to be concerned. Then he won't, but he's not going to drag the meal on because he knows he has to stop the Mincha. Harvest by night time. He's got the whole night. So he doesn't mind continuing and, and having a long dinner. Maybe he's going to forget and he's going to fall asleep. Masked Lord of Sheshas. So Rosh Hashanah's challenge, really? Trichusa la meser hamayne? Is it really that difficult to retie your belt of the of, of your garment that you can't daven? Va'oid, 
like a hachibulitzli. And besides, and if he didn't tie his belt again, so what's the problem? Let him just have it like this. Mishum Shanemar, so Gemara says, no, because it says, he coined the cross of Shem Elokech Yisrael. The Pasuk says that you have to prepare yourself um, uh, because you come and you show yourself prepared and dressed up appropriately to stand before Hashem. Hashem says, I will listen to your tefillah. And this is not appropriate to daven without your, to daven without having your, 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 your belt um, tied and not, st- and not having been uh, addressed properly. This is also points out that the Gemara had said about this, that the, the issue is, um, uh, the, the issue is that, that uh, you have to have for davening a separation between your heart and your lower body and the erva, and uh, without the belt, you don't have that uh, separation. Rabbi Baravuna, so the Gemara tells us that Rabbi Baravuna, Romi Puzamki Umatsli, he would put on um, fancy shoes, uh, uh, proper clothing, and then he would um, dab it. Why? Omar, he could across the Shemalakecha. He would say, Elokech Yisrael. It says, uh, prepare yourself before uh, your God, Yisrael. However, Rava, Shadi Glime, he would, t- if he was wearing fancy clothes, he would take it off, Upachar Yade, and he would hold his hands tight, um, uh, his hands over his arms tight, like uh, he was nervous. Umatsli, and that's how he would dab Omar, he said, because you have to come in feeling like a, a servant before his master. And in order to do that, you can't come in in fancy clothes. Omar of Ashi, Chazina of Kahana, Kiyikitzara. Of Ashi said, it depends. I saw of Kahana that if it was a time of, of, of concern in the, in the community, Baalm or in the world, that there was a bad things going on, Shadi Gulimei, he would take off his fancy clothes and he would hold his hands tight to Matzli and he would daven that way in, in, in a, a, a manner of begging. Like a servant before his master. However, if there was peace in the world, lovish, if he put in nice clothing and covered himself with, the, with nice adornments and with a hat, uh, uh, Brian, I'll get to your question in a minute. Masate from Matsli, and he would have an Omar, he called the cross of Kahi Israel. He said, um, uh, there, uh, prepare yourself before, um, before uh, you, uh, your God, Yisrael. Uh, the, you may notice that uh, many Hasidim wear a gartel, a, uh, basically a rope around their jacket. And this comes from this Gemara indeed, Brian. The, uh, um, the concept of wearing uh, a, a gartel is based on the used to daven in robes, and their robes were closed by a um, uh, um, by a, a, a belt, and um, because you need uh, separation between the heart and and the uh, the erva. So even though the, today we wear uh, trousers. We have plenty of uh, halachic separation anyhow, and it is it, our jackets close with a button. You don't need a belt in order for it to look proper. Um, amongst the chassidim, they continue to uh, wear belts or incorporated wearing these belts as a form of preparation for tefillah based on this command. Rava has even Rav Amnuna Kamar Rava saw Rav Amnuna that he was davening, but he was ex- exceedingly long, extra long in his davening. Omar, he said, I don't understand. He's, he's leaving Torah, which, which is eternal life. And he's busy asking Hashem for things, which is to help him in, in this world, which is temporary life. And, and so the Gemara says, yeah, but Rav Amnuna, why did he do this? But who saw Rav Amnuna is said, yeah, there's time for everything. There's a time to daven, and there's a time to learn, and there's a time to do work, and there's a time to eat. eat, eat. There is a time, even though the Torah is chaye olam, as we say, chaye olam not Hashem gave the Torah to us, the eternal life in, it gave us. But there's a time for that, and there's a time to do other things, and this is a time to, 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 to daven. So you stop learning and you and, and you engage in davening and, and when you do so, you do so properly, even if it's going to take longer. 
Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yosef came to Rabbi Zera, Rabbi Aski B'Shmaita. Rabbi Yirmiya was sitting for Rabbi Zera, and they were dealing with the halacha. No galitzluyeh. So he was rushing. Uh, uh, he was sort of uh, uh, being. He was late to davening, and so he was. He was sort of uh, edging, you know, itching to get out of there so he can go daven. Masari Yekara Le Rabbi Zera. So Rabbi Zera was said about him. Meser Azne Mishmaya Torah. If you turn your ears away from hearing Torah, Gam Tfilasa Toeva. Your davening is also going to be uh, Toeva. This grace by Hashem. If you if you're middle on learning, don't itch to get out to go to daven. It's time to go to daven, right? But but uh, finish the thought, finish the idea, because you're middle of learning, and if you turn your ears away from from listening to Torah, then even um, your tefila will not count. Me'emesai is ascholasadu. So that's so that's daven. When is account and learn? When is account that you've already begun um, uh, the judgment? Which we said that once you started, you don't have to stop. One says when the when the judges put the talus over their head, the yadam would put the talus over their head. When the uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the um, the baladinim, the, the the two sides said their opening statements. The word pesach. And it's not a disagreement. It depends if the Dayanam had already been in a court case in that day. So then there was no need to. Um, uh, when when um, the Dayanam already were in a judgment in that day. So their judgment had started. Um, they were already wearing their towels over their head. So then there's no need for them to uh, put on the towels over their head. So you can't say that's the moment the din started. So therefore, it has to be when the opening arguments were made. Based on oh, today, they were talasim? In many. Not all, but in many. Um, uh, but if they didn't have it based in, if they didn't have a court case yet, then it would be based on, um, uh, then it would be based on uh, the opening arguments. If they, sorry, then it would be based on the towers over there. Rabami Rabasi Aviyasvi Garsi Bin Amudi. Rabami Rabasi was sitting between the pillars and, and they, were, they were learning. And they constantly say, bang and knock on the door. If there's anybody that has a judgment as a din, they should come and ask us. They were sitting in din uh, the, the entire day. In other words, there were people there um, uh, uh, coming and asking them halacha the entire day. And they were, they were hungry. They, 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 their, their hearts were weak because they basically hadn't eaten the entire day. Tana luhu Rabbi Chia bar Rav midifti. So Rabbi Chia said that in Vayama the Amal Moshe and Abu Karadir, we had a problem like this before already. That um, that uh, Moshe was there from the morning to night, um, and uh, and and it was a problem for the people because uh, for Moshe because he was busy. And he couldn't eat. Do you think Moshe sat uh, uh, the entire day um, uh, uh, from the beginning till the end of the day? So when did he learn his own Torah? When did he, um, um, so, uh, so what does it mean that um, so Moshe didn't sit the whole day? And therefore you too also should take a break and eat and should not sit there the whole day. So Ella, why does it say that Moshe was there in the book out there? Ella, lemma the hot cold diet should done with MS, the Amita, a full shahas. If a dying judges adjudicates even one moment, a, 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 a true judgment, Mala of a Kasa Kila Nasa Shutu, the Kadir Boko, the Masa Gracious, he did the Pussa counts him as a partner with Hashem for creation because he's brought MS and judgment to the world. 
And therefore it says, to tell you it's like the creation, which is Erev Just as it says over here, morning and night, and that Moshe sat there for morning and night. And it says in creation, what uh, was one day, Erev and Boker. So therefore we see that uh, it counts as if, if he if judges a true judgment, adjudicates a true judgment, it counts as uh, Dinamis. And as he's a partner in creation. Until when does he sit in judgment? Until the time of the meal, and then at the time of the meal, then it's time to get up. From which possibly we know this, that Sifra says, so uh, it says, "Woe to you, a nation, that your that your king is 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 a child, and your 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 masters, your 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 ministers, already in the morning they're drinking and eating and and, and, and being married, and fortunate to you, uh, land, that your king is a free man, meaning that uh, your your judges are are open and and independent." And your leaders eat in the proper time. Bigvura in strength, for Levish C. So, what is Bigvura? What does it mean uh, uh, that they eat in, in strength? Bigvura shall Torah, that they study Torah first. Levish C shall Yayin, and not in being drunk before they've even stopped them. Tanarbana, Shorishana, Machalud. When somebody eats the first hour of the day, so he is, he is eating like the cannibals. Shnia, if he eats the second hour of the day, Machalis, he eats like the thieves, the ardent robbers. Shlishis, he eats the third hour of the day, Machal Yershin. And it's, uh, he eats at the time that people who had inherited wealth, um, uh, they didn't have to work for their, for their, um, for their uh, Parnassan. And, and therefore they're not worried to, to, to go to work and to work first. Revius, Michael Pali, the fourth hour of the day, that's when workers eat. Hamishis, Michael Kalot, the fifth hour of the day, yeah, that's when you have your meal, then, then it's food um, that uh, everybody eats. Any, it's not so long, Rav Papa, Revius, Zman, Sudol, Chaladim, but Rav Papa had said that the fourth hour of the day is when everybody should, when all people eat. El Revius, you're right, Revius, Michael Kalotim, fourth hour of the day is when everybody eats. Hamishis, Michael Pali, the fifth hour is people that are laborers, they don't have time to eat them, so they're, they're only going to eat after. Shish is Michael Talmud Chacham. Noon, that's what the Talmud Chacham eats. Mikan ve'elach, kezerik evim elachimus. But if you don't eat then, then whenever you're going to eat, it's like you're throwing a rock into an empty, uh, into empty canteen, um, and it can break it. So too, if you, if you didn't eat by noon, it's dangerous. By the way, uh, the um, a concept of six hours um, uh, for between milk and meat comes from this Gemara here, where Talmud Chacham eats at noon, and the second Suda is going to be after he davens and Mincha and so that's going to be at night. So that's from noon to nighttime is six hours, so we see that from one meal to the next, as the Gemara said in Chulin, that he, he, he would wait from one meal to the next, that's the six hours from noon meal to, um, to uh, night time. And some Sefer and Native Yudah and so on say that six hours means five hours, five hours between the meals, because what each, each meal is an hour. So if they start eating at the sixth hour, they would complete it at the seventh hour and start their next meal um, at, the, at the night time, which is the twelfth hour. So you have a five hour gap between. Um, that's the Medvedev Chassam Sefer and others. Am Abai. Om Ron El De Loiton Mide Tzafa. This was said was only uh, that it's dangerous to not eat until noon. Is only if he didn't eat anything at all the whole day. Abo Toy Mide Tzafa. But if he ate something light in the morning, less than what? No problem. Om Abai Brava Misfalo Adam Tfilos Be Beis Hamechas. A person is allowed to daven in a bathhouse. So what are you talking about? But we learned that there is a distinction within the bathhouse itself. Somebody goes into the bathhouse. It's a where everybody stands in the entry room, where everybody stands clothed. 
יש שם מקרא, אפילו אין לה לרן דייר, אין לה דאבן דייר, ואין צורך לרן משהו, שלום אף השור, יהיה לה לרן דייר, אין 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 לה לרן דייר, יהיה שם שאלה שלום, you're allowed to greet people using the word שלום. ואין שם מקרא תפילה, ואין עליו לדאבן, אין עליו לדאבן, אין עליו לדאבן, ואין עליו לדאבן, ואין עליו לדאבן, אם אתה מרגיש תפילה, אתה חייב לדאבן, ואין עליו לדאבן, אבל אם אתה לא מרגיש תפילה, אתה לא יכול לדאבן. מה קורה שבני אדם אין להם לדאבן, אבל בפני האינטרנט, כשאנשים אין שם שאלה שלום, אין עליו לדאבן, ואין 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 ואין צורך לא משנה, אני חייב לשאול אם נאמר כל דבר. סביר מה שאז כי כמה רבה 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 אומר לך שאין בו אדם. רבה 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 Like it says in a toilet, that you're not allowed to daven, Sha'amru Afafi Sha'im B'Tzoya, even if there's nothing, if it's clean at the moment, but it's a toilet, it's a toilet room, you're not allowed to daven in there. Elo ki kamar v'acha b'chaviti. It's talking about a new bathhouse that's never been inaugurated. So then, it's a room, and since it's never been inaugurated, you're allowed to daven. V'ha mivoye voye le ravin. What are you talking about? Even that's a question. We said in modern brachas that there was a question if you designated a room for a bathroom. Does it, the Hasmana Milsihi, is the designation, make it something that it, it therefore is prohibited to use, uh, to daven in there? Why Ravina has no the basic he said. He designated, this room is going to be the bathroom. Now, yesh zimun or in zimun? Does designation, uh, preparation was on the count or not? Well, if she took it, and the, this was not answered in the Gemara Brachas. So why over here are you saying that, that, uh, um, Uh, why are you saying over here um, that, that uh, it, it's never been inaugurated, so it's okay? So the Gemara says, uh, Wouldn't you say that just like by a bathroom, there's a question of Hazmana Milsi, whether designation counts something? Therefore, over here also, there's a question in regards to that bathhouse. The Gemara says, like, no, Dilma, maybe it's different. Shiny Besakisi, the most. A bathroom is disgusting. And therefore, even if you haven't, it, it hasn't been used, you're not allowed to dabble in there. But a bathhouse, really not disgusting. It's just not an appropriate place. And therefore, if it's never been used, it's okay. And we're on top of you on the base, 10 B. The Gemara says, in Shilo Shalom, you're not allowed to greet in, in, in the, um, in the uh, uh, bathhouse. So the Gemara says, Masaila Rabban Nuna, this supports the opinion of Rabban Nuna, Mishmei de Ula, in the name of Ula, the Oma, also Lord of Shita Shalom, the Chaveri Samarfas. You're not allowed to say Shalom to a person in a bathhouse, Mishom Shanema, because it says, Vayikro lo Hashem Shalom, and he called Hashem peace. So uh, uh, Gidon called Hashem Shalom, and therefore, you're not allowed to say Shalom, it's in the name of Hashem, Elam Yata, Emunus and Amiyasa. So so then uh, uh, you can't even say Emuna. Can't say Amen. And the Meir Beisakisa can't say it in a bathroom. The Chesiv Hakel Hadne Emlan, because it says in the pasuk Hashem is the 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 trusted the the Neeman God. If you can tell me, well, perhaps yeah, maybe you're not allowed to say it in a bathroom. Ba Amar Rav Rav Ba Machasya Amar Rav Chama Ba Giura Amar Rav. Shari lameimer himnusa v'beisach. He said, it is permissible to say amen in the bathroom. So the man says, hasam shem gufei le'ikri. Hacha v'tamadina l'akal mehimna. There, it doesn't say Hashem's name. Here, it says Hashem's name with it. Hacha shem gufei ikri shalom. It says, chasiv ha'yikri v'ashem shalom. There, it says, the God that is trustworthy. So the Naman is, is, a, is an adjective, it's a description of Hashem. Hashem is a separate name. So Naman is not the name of Hashem. Over here, he said, Vayikrilo Hashem Shalom, he called Hashem Shalom, it's saying that the name of Hashem is Shalom. And 
Shmo Shalom, and say that Hu Shalom Shmo Shalom, the name of Hashem is peace, and and therefore you shouldn't say that in a bathhouse. Right now, six forty-one. Um, if somebody is not rushing, uh, the appropriate time to double would be to get to the Amida at uh, seven twenty-one, which is the um, on aids today. It's when the uh, Zerich of the sun will be over the horizon. If somebody has to go to work, they can uh, daven straight from here. Um, we'll be, as Hashem, sending out uh, the call. We'll be sending out uh, some halachas uh, pertaining to davening the yechidus, davening alone, and in the optimum way of davening together. And we're going to try and propose that um, at davening times that we can do it on a Zoom. Um, this way, there is a, a set time for tefillah. Um, it, it is an enhancement not only for the individual that davening together at a time that Klai Yisrael, that our community is davening. Um, it is a very painful time that we are unable to daven. In a sense, Hashem has told us um, by, by creating a situation like this, Hashem is saying, um, I don't want you in my shul right now. And so, um, creating a time that we can daven together as one, as a community, virtually, even though it doesn't have the din of minion, it would give us the opportunity to daven um, together in a sense, and that hopefully Hashem will listen to the prayers of the tefillahs of Kali Yisrael when we live together. And additionally, we'll also um, uh, uh, make sure that we have a set time for davening. In this way, we won't forget tefillah. We'll have davening, and it's a time that uh, our tefillahs are really needed. And so um, we're going to propose that and send that out and hopefully have a time uh, every day to daven. But for today, um, if you need to go somewhere, daven now. And if you can wait um, and say the Amida, start the Amida at 721, that's the optimum time for daven. Shem should be the Kabbalah Tfilos. Listen to the Tfilos of Klai Yisrael and uh, heal us, heal uh, Klai Yisrael all over, heal the world. And bring us up that time of shalom. Hushmo, hu shalom, shmo shalom. May Hashem bench the world with shalom. Amen. Good day.